Um, and uh, I decided to give a talk on it. For me, anything that comes from the internet, like memes and new web culture, is like, fascinating and awesome. So I felt compelled to share this with all of you. This is actually a, um, a religion that was started in, well, it was started in like 2010, but it's been going on, the idea was it came around before that. So what exactly is communism? It was officially recognized as a religion in Sweden on January 5th, 2012. Yay! <laughs> after, after three tries, uh, three attempts uh, to get the, uh, the what was it called? The, um, the Swedish, it was the Swedish uh, board of, I don't remember. But it's basically just tell you whether or not you're an official constitutionally protected religion or not. So. They did that, but it's actually a non-theistic, non-exclusionary religion based on the idea that copying and sharing are sacred virtues to be worshipped. So there isn't really a, there isn't really a god involved or anything. So it's not it's not like too dogmatic or anything weird like that. Basically, the idea is that copying and sharing information is sacred and holy and should be celebrated and ethically right. And uh, I think that fits really well with what the pirate party thinks and uh, what the internet thinks in general. Um, in fact, the person who founded it, Mr. Isaac Gerson, who is uh, at Laxil on Twitter, is really awesome. And he's actually a pirate as well, and uh, friends with all the Swedish pirates and stuff. So this is all pretty connected to the pirate party in general. <laughs> um, one of my favorite quotes of his is, copy me. I encourage reckless and inconsiderate copying that denies all consideration of copyright and similar bullshit. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so he actually, this idea, the copy me idea, was around before that um, as a way for people to share that they wanted to share what they had out there and they could all sort of use the symbol and uh, symbology of copyism to say, listen, you can copy, take what you want, remix it, and share it. But it only became an official religion when this guy, this he was a philosophy student in Sweden, decided to uh, say, hey, let's make this a real religion, guys. Um, he doesn't like to officially associate it with the Pirate Party. So it's all like unofficially associated with the Pirate Party, but it's still, it's, it's pretty, pretty much pirate-esque. And I mean, even the group that they were in before was called the, uh, the Pirate Bureau or something, some Swedish word for it. Yes, very good. Yeah, you can say Swedish words much better than me, I'm sure. Mm. And uh, he tweets out, he has a website of his own, he tweets out different things, copy missed things, and uh, so he's like the founder of the religion. But we don't worship him. <laughs> <laughs> he, wouldn't, he probably wouldn't like that very much. Um, he's, he encourages everybody to just copy and share information and maintain hardline copy. <laughs> um, so, Pretty much got some basic tenets right here. Another one of our symbols is the uh, the K in the pyramid and uh, control B and control C. Copy and paste. <laughs> uh, so simply all knowledge to all. The search for knowledge is sacred. The circulation of knowledge is sacred, and the act of copying is sacred. Reproduction of information is ethically right. The flow of information is ethically right. Remix spirit is a sacred kind of copying. So it's even so copying information and spreading it is good. It's sacred and right. But when you copy something and take what you've copied and remix it with something else that you've copied and then share it, which is called copy acting, it's even better. So the, the idea of the remix, copy, remix, share, that, that, that's what our, uh, our whole conference is called. And that's really the ideals of copies. Um, we also believe that if you copy and remix information from somebody, that is an act of respect towards them and they should be honored, not offended. <laughs> um, so far, there has been, as of January 12, 6,000 registered members, but I'm pretty sure that because of the news coverage and all the various things that have gone out on the internet lately about it, that has probably doubled by now. Because as soon as something hits a critical mass on the internet, it just explodes. And I don't think this hit the, has hit the flying spaghetti monster explosion yet, but I think it's going to be up there. Like, it, it, I hope that it will become sort of the next flying spaghetti monster religion of the internet. <laughs> yeah, what? That's called pasifarians. Yes, pasifarians. Right. Right. Yeah. right. Yeah. But I mean, this is actually something that, as as a you know, flying spinning monster was created to be sort of ridiculous and absurd and you know make fun of religion in general. Well, this is actually like deep down inside makes sense to me. I mean, it does to me. Maybe it does to you guys too. I hope so. But it, the fact that we would we would worship and appreciate sharing information 
in such a holy way is it, pretty, it's like the religion of the future. <laughs> um, uh, copyists are inherently opposed to copyright uh, because of this. We don't think anyone should be restricting the flow of information at all. Um, so once again, we're pirates. And uh, we also, um, because of the, uh, the belief that we should be able to share whatever we want without copyright, we're worried about that, people that practice this are persecuted by groups like the RIA and the MPAA and copyright monopolies. Um, they don't want to share any information freely. Mm -hmm. So we have, our, we have our evil people persecuting us. <laughs> <laughs> Every religion needs that, you know? Um, um, but we hope that because since it's been officially constitutionally recognized in Sweden as a religion, actually practicing communism under that, under that religion or file sharing under the communist name will be checkered. So, like, let's say the Pirate Bay all decide to become communists, you know, and then and then uh, somebody tries to, you know, charge them with copyright infringement or whatever. Well, we're communists. This is part of our religion. It probably won't hold up, but it'd be really cool to see. <laughs> <laughs> I think it'd be a really cool thing to see if uh, if people could defend it with that, and it would work. But the, I mean. I don't know. We're, we kind of don't know what will happen with that yet. It hasn't happened. But I think it set a cool and kind of weird precedent for like freedom of religion in a way. Um, so this is another simple. <laughs> <laughs> now, this pretty much is one of the most simplest religions that has ever existed ever. Um, so it's kind of hard to go into too much more detail about it. But there is no there is no real dogma. Really, all that we care about as communists is that you do your part to share and spread as much information as you can, as you're willing to, and as you can. There's no mandate to share everything. Um, you're not going to go to hell if you don't share. There's no you know, punishment for anything. I mean, I guess if you start you know, agreeing with the MPAA and the RIA and decide to uh, you know, enforce copyright regulations, you might get kicked out of the church. But there's, <laughs> there's no real dogma or sins or, I mean, I guess there's like, you know, maybe the one sin of not doing it or of, of, of stopping somebody from copying something, which is what, you know, our persecutors do. Um, that's the only thing I can really think of that's really a sin. I mean, in my mind, this, this whole religion itself is not very focused on, like, humans and human living. If, if robots had a religion, I feel like this would be it. You know, worshipping the transmission of bytes and data and, uh, and uh, the uh, flow of information, like to, through the swarm. I don't know. It seems like a swarm type of thing to me. So, so it's, it's not so much about you as an individual in communism. It's about what you can do as an individual to help share all of the information possible. So, like, you need to seed your torrents, basically. Seed your torrents. You know, repost that thing, uh, retweet that thing, spread that information as far and wide as you can. Whatever it is. Um, be a great song. Could be, you know, work of literature. Could be anything. Yes. Which countries is it legally safe just to have your seed boxes? In? Uh, I believe Sweden at this point. Hmm. They say Sweden's like a pirate haven, um, and Sweden's where the pirate party started, and Sweden's where. You certainly don't want to have a seed box here. No, 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 no. Yeah, yeah. It's. I mean. It all depends on the material, but basically. Yeah, it's it's. Uh, there's different different places where it's safer uh, than others. Right here and right now is actually quite a dangerous time for communists because of the crackdown on various torrenting sites lately. If there's going to be any form of sainthood for the guy who invented multicast. <laughs> <laughs> there's all kinds of awesome directions you can take this in that you know that I feel like this church could also easily schism because of. So instead, instead of control V control C, well no, I like right click. You know, right and right paste. Like, the, you know, that could be a schism. Well, schism would be a form. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, isn't what you're stating, stating the exact opposite of what Connor just stated? Of what? Oh, oh, well, well for instance, with I will get to that. Yeah, but, I will, with, yes. But no, but with, um, what Connor is saying is that you basically need to protect yourself. Yes. So that the government doesn't impede on your civil rights to privacy. Yes. But you're stating the exact opposite of that. Whereas an artist or writer or anyone, an inventor, anybody who has copyright protection is totally thrown out. Yeah, we don't care about that. 
Right, that's the exact opposite of what he said. So you don't believe in privacy. You don't no, 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 no. It's not that I don't believe in privacy. You, you want to say? Yeah, I'd love to. What do you want to say? Actually, we're right in line. The whole idea of capitalism is that you have the choice to share. And we're yeah. talking about ideas, creations. We're not talking about my age, my date, my profile. Right. That, that's, that's my personal opinion. I believe you're going to No, but no, no. What you're saying here that if you have the right to copy and share, then that means that the governments have the right to copy and share your information mm -hmm. without you being with them. This isn't about personal here. information here. No, I'll no, get to that. No, 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 copyright protection is somebody's work of art, somebody's <laughs> written. That's, that, that, that's it. I will, that, if we haven't addressed it by the end of this, then we should talk yeah, about I will talk to you more about this because yeah. I, 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 I will be getting to that because yeah. that is an argument that I have also thought of and, and figured out and talked to people about with the church. Okay. No, that's fine. Well, well, I was going to agree with that. Okay. So I'll wait. I'll wait. Yeah, I'll wait. Yeah. No, what were you going to say? I, I'd like to mention, first of all, there's no copyright to factual information. Right. So there's no <laughs> copyright to your profile. Privacy laws would protect your profile. Yes. Not we believe it's well, in privacy. The, sure, fact, of, the yeah. fact of Connor's age is not something that can be protected by copyright. Same thing with baseball statistics, oh, not yeah. something that yeah. can be protected by copyright. Well, They're protected no, by depends. other legal reasons. Copyright protects the form of which that information is in. For instance, one of the big things you see about copyright law, you cannot copyright an idea. So anybody here can state an idea, which yeah. is not copyrighted. But if I put your idea into a poem, into a play, into anything written, or or it's, or it goes, you know, into that type of a form, that form itself can be copywritten. It's what you say. It's how you say it. Right. If you did something which was published, that is your right. That is your protection. It's Not copyright. It's poem, but if I lift yours without your permission, without permission from the publishing company. She's saying that's a lot. Yeah, I don't, yeah, we don't care about that. Yeah. Go ahead and finish. We, we, we don't care about like copyright bullshit like that. Uh, that's exactly what we said. I mean, we're pirates. That doesn't matter. I don't care about your stupid copyright laws that goes against my religion. My religion is that information, culture should be free, and there should. We also agree with giving people, you know, uh, credit for their work and and paying them. Um, just different business models as opposed to DRM encryption and you know stopping people from sharing information physically and technologically. Um, One more thing I just want to yeah, say. Um, okay. I have two paralegal certificates. I'm in the legal industry, I'm in the video industry, being a producer and production assistant. So I can look at this from all different angles. Yes. But. Okay, cool. Yeah. All right. Um, so basically, where I was anyway um, before our lovely. Uh, yeah, Sorry, <laughs> yes, um, I was discussing what uh, what copyist <coughs> as a uh, religion actually means to a human being, and that it doesn't really actually. There's no afterlife. There's no uh, god or sin or anything like that. But it doesn't. That doesn't really. You can believe in what you want. Besides this, this is just like a piece of the center of it. And uh, in a way, it's it's almost like the meaning of life is to. Download, copy, and share information. Yes. I don't. I just when you get a moment, I just want to ask a question of the audience. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, I can do that. Sorry. So it's almost twelve thirty, and we are supposed to have lunch. Now, we're not paying for lunch, <laughs> but uh, if folks wanted to get some pizzas or something and eat here, if you wanted to go out, what what do folks feel like doing? Because, you know, well, so while Lauren's talking, we could go and order something, or if people just want to forage for themselves. I'll probably forage. Forage. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Well, who, so let me ask this. Who would like pizzas? There we go. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Let's put an order together. Okay. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Okay, cool. Okay. All right. Yeah. Last question? Yes. Yeah. So, there's a rational underpinning for this, right? Yes, I will get to that. <laughs> well, all right. So, I have a concern that I hope you address at some point. Yeah. In this last um, interaction between you and that gentleman, mm. you. It, I can see this being used as a crutch, where someone, instead of taking it from a rational perspective, here's the fundamental reasons I came to believe this, someone can say, this is my religion. Mm -hmm. And I can see that. It uh, is a religion. Okay, but it's a is it a religion, or is it a religion based on 
rational underpinnings? I will get to that. Because <laughs> I will talk about how, what, when I, okay. So, it's a religion, um, because it's been officially declared a religion. If you have your own definition of what a religion actually is, and this doesn't meet your, you know, definition of religion, uh, that's fine, I don't care. <laughs> the, uh, you know, to me, there is a rational underpinning in the idea that over the course of human history, information has become more and more easily distributed to the masses, like exponentially throughout our human evolution and human development. It seems that the universe wants information to, to be flowing and free, you know, uh, ever since, you know, the printing press was invented. And then suddenly people can get books instead of having to go to one place to get books. And then, you know, I don't want to go through the whole history of, you know, published word and publication, but eventually we get to the internet, where now all ideas can be spread at really, really, really fast rates and reach so many more people. And uh, that seems to be an essential part of our humanity is to sh share and spread and remix and copy information and, and spread ideas. And this is sort of worshiping that, um, the idea that 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 is sort of central to our humanity and sort of maybe the meaning of life is to share ideas and to spread information and to let the best ones grow and, and spread and like a virus, <laughs> like a meme, I guess you could say. I mean, if you even look at it in, in biological terms, um, that's actually how we repro reproduce, uh, is DNA, um, you know, breaks off and, and copies itself and then remixes the different, you know, different characteristics of the mom and the dad and uh, then you become yourself. We are actually born from a communist, a communist action, which is a copy and remixing and sharing of DNA. I mean, if that's not, if that's not like, if, if this doesn't make you go like this, I <laughs> that's exactly my expression when somebody explained communism to me for the first time. It is, it is, yes, that's how some cells divide and reproduce, that's how we reproduce, and that's how information is trying to reproduce. Slightly different viewpoint. Mm. Just because it may resonate with some people, mm. don't conflate you as a spiritual being with vast amount more capability as well as the world that you created planet. With the you you're living in this life. Right, right, right. Okay, so yes, there is, there is. I mean, evolution is a communist I, action I, too. I, I know a variety of people who are quite aware of pretty much anything where they put their attention on it, whether it's what's going on at their home or their parents in the nursing home or whatever, mm. just by thinking they, they get it. Um, I'll stop. Okay, cool. But it's very real to some people. What is that? That kind of ability. Oh, yes, and I think that might be where our, our humanity and our future is. Maybe in getting even more, it might become a biological... And, and has evolution. been before, but it's been suppressed. Yes, that, that could be the case. Um, I don't know much about it, but that could very well be the case, that, uh, that the flow of information actually is the meaning of life. <laughs> you saw the scary goats movie, that's... Those aren't the only people with those skills. I see. Interesting, huh? Well, the other issue is about communism, you might think, when you when you see it, is, well, I'm already another religion, so I'm not going to be communist because I believe in Jesus, or I believe in Muhammad, or I'm a Hindu. So I will prove to you why it works in every religion. Well, every religion that I decide to prove to you. <laughs> so right here, we have Jesus on a map. <laughs> Jesus was actually a communist. There are a few quotes in the Bibles, in the Bible, um, uh, one by uh, St. Paul to the Corinthians, uh, copy me, my brothers, as I copy Christ himself. And another, um, and this I pray that your charity may more and more abound in knowledge and in all understanding. And um, in uh, the Corinthians 13.2, um, it's a much longer passage, but it basically says that all knowledge in the world is useless without the desire for charity, without the desire to share. And uh, Hosea 4.6 suggests that the obstruction of knowledge could destroy humankind. So, I mean, these are communist ideas um, in the Bible from, you know, 2,000 years ago or whatever, that, uh, that if you're a Christian, uh, now you have an excuse to be a communist as well. I think you can go. <laughs> Jesus, <laughs> Jesus copied and pasted the loaves and fishes himself. <laughs> 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 He also turned water into wine, which is more of a remix. <laughs> so Islam as well has 
Right. You can't say that all information can be shared as knowledgeable, it's but then, oh, you wanted. can't, you can't do this, or we don't want you to do this, or we want you to choose to do this. It's, it's either all or nothing. Either you have it, or you don't. Because if you, if you are doing this, you're doing exactly what the government does. We're not collecting massive amounts no, of data. No, for instance, for yeah. instance, we have, according to our United States Constitution, freedom of expression. Yes. But when you look, freedom of speech, freedom of expression. Yes. But when you look in reality, right, right. do we have 100% total freedom of expression and speech? No, we don't. Right. You can't say things libelous against somebody. You can't say things scandalous. Right. Right? You can't shout fire in a crowded theater. Right. Yeah, right. You know? they have, so, in they other words, so in other words, what you're doing is the same thing. You're saying our above principle is, is this, but yeah. then you're saying, well, if you don't want it out there, don't put it out there. We should empower people to make their own decisions. Yeah. You shouldn't be copying something with ill intent. But what is what is ill intent? You have to explain. You have to well, I mean, define it's what is sure. ill intent to cause harm to. Yeah. But if all information is, is being shared, I think it's like three people. But you can't least, do it with ill intent. You contradict yourself. I think the answer is he's free to start his own religion. Well, no, religion. I'm just. Just it seems there should be a distinction between information that's public yes. and not, and I think that's where that's, this privacy issue yes, is. Yes, that so is. So if you have information, knowledge that you don't publish, and then you have information that you do publish, yeah. I think this religion is focusing on that. Yes. If I mean, I'm understanding it properly. Yes, Wait, it is actually. On the information that is published is what you're focusing on. Yes. Okay. We're not focused right. on somebody's bowel movements unless they want to publish it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good distinction. Uh, in the context of Thank reacting you. to copyright protection and, and how it impedes the sharing of culture and knowledge. Oh, I, I, I so that's, be, that's what the main focus is. There's some really serious cock hidden knowledge between five and 6,000 classified patents, including Tesla's essentially free energy, his anti-gravity levitation scooter class hardware, and we've got, if you want to Google for um, the Rainbow Project or the Philadelphia Project, oh, we had yeah, cloaking okay. stuff back then. Yeah. Um, it's presumed that we've had a Martian um, colony for decades. Um, you Google for um, Eisenhower's granddaughter, she was invited to go, and she told me. Yeah, uh, well, it probably this idea. But the technology for free energy was suppressed by the energy barons, and that should be a crime against the energy Yeah. As well fracking and other crap going on would be unnecessary if you had really, really free energy they didn't want. Yeah, and the, if communists, everybody was a communist, uh, we would want that information to be free and share with everybody. Nikola Tesla was murdered, and they took all his stuff, and I fired one guy, two guys. One was a, shall we say, Bush family earlier person. And the other was uh, whose original name, when born in Germany, was. Hunter. This is all patents that we're talking about yeah. now, though. That There's, comes later. Uh, yeah. Back to copyright. Uh, these Mar are so old, patents uh, run out. Mar this is yeah. huge technology that our government has. But it's still patents. It's not the realm of copyright. There's no copyright in a patent. My specific the information. The, the question of the woman in the front. Yeah. Well, the question that she asked uh, was about the right of first publication, and I think the gentleman in the yeah. front picked yeah. up on that. Yeah. Artists are always going to have the right to be the first to publish their work. Yeah. And years ago, before copyright, artists like Mozart made a considerable living publishing their manuscripts. Right, right. And then that was it. They made one sale, they made their money on that sale. Yeah. Well, you know, um, a communist perspective is that our, uh, because of our the growth of technology and freedom of information to be spread as fast as it can be, uh, all of this is a is a generally a good thing that should be, uh, you know, we, we don't care about this copyright stuff to be honest. Like we don't care. Uh, somebody else can find out other ways to make money off doing their creative stuff. Like, but if anybody is trying to restrict the flow of information, that's the pro that's a problem to us, and that's a bad thing. So it's, it's very simple, and you guys might not agree with it. That's fine. But uh, that's that's just what they believe, and uh, what we believe. And uh, that's, it's kind of a radical, far, you know, kind of crazy position, maybe. But uh, yeah. it's, uh, I mean, there's, 
there's it's not like we don't we don't agree with things like you should attribute uh, somebody's work to them. You should give them credit. That's just the right thing to do. It's just not in the doctrine of the church, and maybe it will be in the future. We'll see. You know, it's still an evolving church. So, but um, also with privacy, we do because it's a persecuted religion. We have to be careful for our um, meetings uh, and stuff. You know, we have another rule, which is we have a um, leaders called ops, like IRC channel. Chaperone ops, and uh, when you you know ask go to an op for help, maybe pastoral care, whatever whatever you know ops do, um, there is a pledge of secrecy between the two people and between the, uh, about the conversation, um, just like for priests with confession. You know we do believe in secrecy um, and in, in keeping our own meetings somewhat uh, somewhat you know secret because of the the law being you know coming down on you if you're sharing files and stuff. So. Yes. Are there uh, regular meetings somewhere? I want there to be so bad. I know there are in Sweden, but I would love there to be someday in Massachusetts. That would be awesome. But you know, I don't know if I can go start a church anytime soon. So, and we also believe that eavesdropping on people is actually is actually a bad thing. Um, it is you know spying on people. You know, uh, you really when you it should be that when you share your information, you should know who you're sharing it with and be wanting to share it and not have somebody else eavesdropping on it and, uh, you know, spying on you. That, that is actually a, a sin in, uh, in communism to be doing that. It's, there's a, again, there's a big, as, as, this, as people have stated here, between what is public and what is right. private. When you're in a public place, yeah. somebody eavesdropping oh, no, on a conversation, yeah. right, there's a separation between, between your, public and private. But if you're in privacy in your own home, yeah, it's that's, that's, that's a difference. Yeah, yeah. So what is your... Um, I don't think we get that detailed into exactly like what, where and what is a private public place, where and what is this. I mean, our coffee business meetings are considered private, and um, yeah. you know, conversations between people is considered private. You you know, go somewhere without surveillance. Uh, that surveillance should be open and obvious. It shouldn't be secret surveillance. Yes. Yeah. Um, <laughs> coffee business meetings are private. Well, I mean, they're public. I mean, you can go to them, but they're they're kept. What is what is going on there is you know kept. Um, not, not kept secret, I guess. That's the wrong way to put it. Basically, we don't want like government agents coming in and spying on them. You know, you don't want you don't want like the RIA mafia or whatever <laughs> coming in and, 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 and seeing, oh, we're sharing files here illegally. And, you know, so it's more like a protection because of the current situation than it is uh, is you know as a general um, uh, you know idea. We would ideally want anything, any public meeting or any sort of group meeting to be transparent for the most part. Transparency in government. And stuff like so that. you're behaving as a as a secret underground press writer. Yes, pretty much. Exactly. Fair so anyway, bless you. On to my last slide, where you can find more information on us. The seat of faith. Um, the uh, the official site is uh, this name is um, Bondet.us. It's a Swedish church, so it's got a Swedish name. And you can also join us in uh, our IRC on telecomics at a uh, hashtag copy me. Or you can follow me on Twitter at, at Splendid Spoon. And um, there's also uh, the previous guy's uh, Twitter that started the church that you can follow. But he also tweets somewhat like half in Swedish and half in uh, English. Uh, you can also follow him for more communism news. And he will be giving a talk in Serbia, I believe, about communism oh, coming up. Um, yes? Um, what's your position on the idea of information being classified or not? I mean, uh, getting back to the whole idea of yeah. classified um, inventions, I mean, there's the question, I mean, okay, if we have a classified novel form of energy that doesn't create any pollution or anything like that, that might be good to have in public, but on the other hand, what happens if someone makes a super germ that you could just do with like $5 worth of Clorox? <laughs> Wait, what? No, it's theoretical, <laughs> but let's say it is someone invents, creates an invention where for $25 for something inside of a juice box, you can create a super germ oh. that is basically flying flow on steroids. Dangerous. Dangerous. So should it be, that, should should it be okay for him to have that secret, something. is what you're asking. Uh, yeah. So where exactly are you drawing the line between um, when to oppose the idea of information being classified and when to support, okay, this is just too bloody dangerous. Um, where is that line? I don't think that that line is drawn in this religion. This is very simple. And uh, we hopefully can, you know, uh, it's also it's also not a, not a system of government. Mm -hmm. So like your system of government can deal with that. 
our religion is just going to spread information that we feel we want to and whenever we can. Um, it doesn't necessarily have to be. There are information that we might choose not to spread. It's not a mandate to spread everything. You don't have to spread all information. Yes. And I mean, since so, so it goes into politics, I mean, that's part of probably why the funder of yeah. uh, Us Isaac does not want to have an affiliated pirate. Because yes, yes. These other questions. Like yeah, they come up. Yeah. But this is like a simple, nice religion. Hey, let's all share our seed our torrents. Like, it's not, uh, you know, uh, these, these issues, you know, will come up and are, are, are relevant and uh, do make sense. Um, this is also a new religion. So the people haven't, in, within the church, haven't quite, you know, had to deal with that issue yet. Mm. So it hasn't really come up. So it hasn't really been dealt with or, or discussed. I mean, I, I, I think that there are, you know, pro, there could be arguments within it about what people should do in that situation. But it's not really like a code of how to live every second of your life. It's, it's a religion. We love sharing information. Yay. <laughs> Free. Yes. 